I recently made a table for a client and it's a modern design and I liked it so much that I wanted to add it to my furniture line. So I thought I'd make for a really fun video if I tried to do it in two days. But I also wanted to not just show you how I make the table, but why I fabricated it the way I did. The table is gonna be three foot wide and four and a half feet long or 54 inches. It's gonna be 30 inches tall, which is pretty standard. I'm gonna make it all out of inch and a half material. And I wanted it to be really thick because this design has a tendency to rack if you don't make it strong enough. So it's gonna be a really beefy base, but the way we design the splay, it makes it look like it's not so beefy. So I'm gonna break this down now. I need 54 inches of material for the top, but I got more than enough here, so I'll be able to get the top and some of the base components out of each stick here. So I'm gonna take these down and roughly break them down to about 56 inches over on the miter saw. With my stock surfaced down to two sides, I would normally take this over to the planer and thickness it down to the final thickness. But this wood is really nice and I want to save some of the material for veneers for other projects. And then I will take them over to the planer and get them down to the final thickness. We got our tabletop laid out, everything's grain oriented, and we'll talk about that here real quick, but first I wanna talk about this jacked up piece of wood. This turned into a taco on me, and that just happens. This used to be a living organism, and now we're using it to build furniture. This is something you need to factor in when you're designing your pieces and when you're ordering your material. I mean, we had seven pieces of wood, and one of them went bad. So that's one in every seven pieces of wood on average for this project have gone bad so far. So I would factor in at least 10 to 15% waste when you're ordering up your material. Uh, I do only need six boards, but because I ordered seven, we're gonna be all right. So I just wanna talk about that real quick. These things do move, it happens. You just need to factor it into everything. I've got all my boards grain matched how I want them to be. Some of this stuff is really quarter sawn. Some of it is honestly, this is almost plain sawn. I'm not super happy about this board but it's gonna look really nice when it's all finished up. I made these look as good as I could with what I've got. I think they look really nice. We had to get a little, I wanted to have six six inch boards, right? But this one board was the odd seventh board that I used to cover just in case I had something turn into a taco and it was a little narrower than I want. So we ended up going five and a half, six, and six and a half, and that gets us our 36 inches. So I've got that laid out, we're ready to go. The next step now is to get this marked up for dominoes. And let's talk about the domino and why we're using it on this tabletop. The domino will not add any strength to this panel. This panel has a lot of glue surface area. It is very strong. The domino is simply going to make it so that when I do glue this up, these surfaces will all be planar to each other. They'll be at the same surface so I don't have to do any extra sanding. I do have a little bit of taco wing on this board, but it's not a whole lot, and the domino will pull that all together, and it'll be really nice when we're done. So let me get this all marked up and get this thing ready to get some dominoes in.
All right, the tabletop is in clamps and it looks really nice. I'm really happy with how this came out. Everything's nice and flat. We'll go back later and clean that up. But for now, while well, that's in clamps, I'm gonna start working on the base. I cut out templates earlier on my CNC and I'm gonna start marking out things and cutting out these parts. We need to make two of these short stretchers and two of these long aprons and four legs. I'm gonna just line rip these to the size I need, which these are three inches. So I'll just do some three inch lengths and then cut everything down to size. And on these, I'm gonna trace them out and cut them out on the bandsaw and then flush trim them and L fence them and get them to the finished size. So let's get going on that right now. I'm wrapping up day one. I got all my parts cut out and the tabletop is in clamps still. Gonna leave that overnight. And then tomorrow when I get back in here to start, I'm gonna do all the joinery, which for me is like the funnest part. I love doing the joinery, it's super fun. So tomorrow we'll get going on the joinery, get going on the tabletop and try to wrap this thing up by the end of the day. I think we'll be good, but let's see how it goes. All right, day two, we're getting over here to start the joinery. I'm gonna do the mortise and tenon on the panther router. Now this is the leg, obviously. I'm gonna do a mortise into this and I'm gonna have the apron have the tenon on it. So I like to use the pan router, it's a great tool. It doesn't matter how you attain the mortise and tenon, what matters is that you use a mortise and tenon because that is definitely the best joint for this joinery. I was saying that the mortise and tenon is the best joint for this joinery, and you can see here, if you lay this over here, that the tenon actually comes well into the meat here, so you actually get a good, strong grab. And this, this joinery is really tight. I mean, I'm gonna have to knock that together with a hammer. Once the glue gets in there, and by hammer, I mean mallet, not a hammer. This isn't, this isn't a framed up wall. But we're gonna use a mallet to knock this together, and with the glue in there, everything tight, this is gonna be a super strong joint, and it's just gonna last a lifetime. I mean, this is the proper way to make this. So the next step is to get the profile face on this, and then we're gonna glue up the subassembly. That means all these legs and aprons will get glued together. And by all, I mean two. So there's two of them, we'll glue those up. And then after that, we need to attach these stretchers that are gonna go here. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. With our sub-assemblies and clamps, I'm gonna take the clamps off the tabletop. It's been sitting here for about a day now. 
And I'm gonna start cutting the under bevels on this. And then once we're done with the under bevels, I'll get the top kind of cleaned up and then I'll start attaching the two sub assemblies together with the stretchers. So let's get going on that now. <laughs> I've got my under bevel cut on the table. All sides have the under bevel. And when I was planning all my grain selection out and my planks and all that stuff, I had my show side, which is gonna be the top. And then on the bottom, I put all my stuff with any of the defects I wanted to avoid. So now I need to deal with those defects. So I've got a knot here, a knot here, and there's a crack here. This is a check on the end grain. For these, I'm gonna use a filler that I like to use. It's a urethane based filler, it doesn't matter what it is, but um, it, I'm gonna put that in here. You could use epoxy or something like that, but uh, you could also cut an inlay here and make it look really fancy, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put the urethane filler in here, and then for this, I'm gonna put a little bow tie in. I'm actually pretty tired of bow ties. <laughs> um, I think they get used a lot for things, but they are very good utility. They, they actually will keep this crack from getting worse. So I'm gonna put a small one where the crack is the smallest. It's already, it can't crack anymore past this point, but it could continue to crack down here, so I wanna stop it by putting that bow tie in. All right, now I am gonna be setting up for joining the stretchers to the two sub-assemblies on the legs. And I'm gonna use the Festool Domino for that. Uh, the dominoes are just floating tenons, you've seen them before, but they're floating tenons that go into two mortises. So this is a quick and easy way to do it, and it'll be really strong. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is get that set up, get everything clamped down, set up all my markup, and get to cutting. As I was getting my last bit of sanding going, I noticed that there was a dent here. This is, must have been from when I hit this with the mallet and I was bringing the joints together. So I'm going to use the old iron and wet rag trick. What that does is the moisture and heat swells the, uh, the wood and it'll hopefully pop it back out and look good. So we'll check that here in just a second. I'm gonna throw this wet rag on here and hit it with the old iron you use in your house. Mm -hmm. 